selecting the right power supply or battery can make the difference between a plane that performs and one that potentially ends up crashing. This video covers the basics of what you need to know to select the right LiPo and the pitfalls to avoid. It also covers more advanced information for those that are after the best flying experience possible. While the information about batteries is applicable to all propeller RC planes, it does have specific relevance to planes that are just under 250 grams, since the weight restrictions take extra consideration. I should note that some of the information provided in this video assumes that you have a basic working knowledge of RC power systems. There are good introductory resources on the web covering these basics, but if you're unable to find some, please leave a comment and I can work something out. Okay, so the first and most important step in selecting the right battery is to determine the type of flying experience that you're after. Do you want a slow flyer or a glider, a sports or 3D plane, or something in between? Each require different power levels and correspondingly also different batteries to provide the necessary power. I've adopted the table from the source shown to suit our discussion of sub 250 gram planes. As you can see, a 2S battery will be much more suitable for a slow or park flyer or glider. A 3S, on the other hand, will cover the middle of the spectrum performance. A 4S may be needed if you're interested in unlimited 3D performance. Remember that these recommendations are for planes weighing around 250 grams and would need to be adjusted for lighter or heavier planes. Now that we know how to determine the number of cells or voltage, the next step is to select the right battery capacity. There are two things that you want to consider when figuring out capacity. And the second one is really important and not often talked about in detail. But let's start with the first one, which is flight time. The bigger our battery capacity, or the less power our plane uses, the longer is our flight time. You can easily estimate flight time based on taking the battery capacity in amp hours and dividing it by the average current load or current discharge during flight. I do not want to get too sidetracked in this video, but I can provide the details of how to both estimate and measure the current in another video. Let me know in the comments if this would be helpful. For this video, I have estimated flight times based on a 500 milliamp hour battery and included them here. Keep in mind that these are for reference only, and the flight times will vary somewhat depending on your motor, your prop, your ESC, as well as your flying style. The second and more important consideration for selecting the right capacity battery relates to the supply current. This can make the difference between a well-performing plane and a crashed one. A motor will only be as powerful as the current that it is provided by the battery. Manufacturers give information about how much current the battery is capable of supplying in terms of the discharge rate. For example, these batteries both have a discharge rate of 25C, or 25 times the battery capacity. Let's take the bottom battery as an example. If we do the math and multiply the capacity of 450 milliamp hours by 25, we get just over 11 amps. So let's test this out. Can we actually get that amount of current? Here is a little bench setup that can be invaluable for testing your RC plane power system. The key aspect includes being able to measure the current and thrust. And we have that here. So let's see what happens. As is evident from this video, the battery initially provides the 8.5 amps that the motor is demanding at full throttle, but then the current quickly drops to about 6.5 amps. With the drop in current, the thrust also drops. So the battery was supposed to be able to deliver around 11 amps, but it is only delivering about half of that and reduced thrust. In this experiment, the drop happens quite quickly after the throttle is set to full but I had situations in flight where the reduction was not so instant or predictable, and on several occasions it was unfortunately in the middle of a maneuver. So what is happening? Well, the reality is that the specified discharge rates can be inaccurate 
or perhaps they are overstated by battery manufacturers. They can also be affected by various factors, such as charge level and condition of the battery. I note that the batteries I'm using in these experiments are relatively new. And so why is this so important? Well, let's say that you get really good at flying. You're flying 3D and you're hovering and your plane is close to the ground. The plane suddenly loses power as the battery is unable to provide the needed current and the plane drops to the ground. So how do we get around this? Well, there are a couple of possible ways. The obvious and sure one is to increase the number of cells. For example, go from a 2S to a 3S. But you can also increase the battery size or capacity. Here are three videos comparing the effects. Here is a 500 milliamp hour 2S. And once it stabilizes, it produces about 95 grams of thrust. Here is a 800 milliamp hour 2S. And it produces 108 grams of thrust or about 14% more thrust. It is able to deliver more current, about 3.5 amps instead of 3 amps. Finally, here we have a 500 milliamp hour 3S battery. The higher voltage produces a thrust of about 128 grams. This is over 30% more power than the 500 milliamp hour 2S. When we look at the bigger picture, while the 3S produces the most thrust, it is also heavier and results in shorter flight times. The larger 800 milliamp hour capacity 2S, on the other hand, provides some increase in thrust, lots more flight time, but also added weight. There is no free lunch here, but at least we have an understanding of the options from which we can choose from. I want to make an important point here. In the industry, we usually only associate power and performance with the voltage or number of cells. You need more power, so you upgrade from a 2S to a 3S. But if you need just a little bit more power, it may be better to increase the battery capacity instead of the voltage. Increasing the capacity will also increase your flight time. However, the bigger moral of the story is not to solely rely on the numbers, and especially the discharge rate, but rather to test and verify the performance of your systems as I have done here. And do not just test your system under the perfect conditions. Consider that a battery's voltage and current both decrease the longer that you fly, as the battery is no longer fully charged and its power output is decreased. Hence, the battery and motor might produce the necessary power and thrust when it is 90 to 100% charged, but not when the battery charge level is depleted to, for example, 60 to 70%. Many of us also calculate or test the performance of our systems with a fresh battery without considering the depletion of performance when the battery starts to run low towards the latter part of our flight. Okay, so let's return to the original question of the battery capacity. For a high performance sports and limited 3D capable plane weighing just under 250 grams, a 500 milliamp hour LiPo will likely be a good starting point to provide a decent flight time and consistent current to the motor during full throttle maneuvers. This assumes that you pick the right motor and prop, of course, which I discuss in another video. In any case, as I mentioned before, it can be very insightful to test out your system and adjust the parameters of the battery as needed, either by increasing the voltage, the discharge rate, or capacity if possible. Well, you're probably asking yourself, why not just use a larger battery and do away with all the testing and analysis? Well, the battery is typically the heaviest component of an RC plane, and more power equals more weight. For example, a 500 milliamp hour 2S battery weighs around 30 grams, and that's not too bad. But a 500 milliamp hour 4S will weigh upwards of 60 grams, or in other words, over a quarter of your 250 gram plane weight. That starts to become a challenge as you try to construct the rest of the plane without exceeding 250 grams. So it is important to select a battery that is only as big as necessary. Here is a helpful equation for estimating the weight of a battery. 
Take the number 30 and multiply it by the number of cells, and then multiply it again by the capacity in amp hours. For example, a 2S 1 amp hour battery will weigh 30 times 2 times 1, or about 60 grams. Some final thoughts on selecting a light bulb. Consider the size and shape. Batteries come in different shapes and dimensions, so you need to make sure that the form factor works for your plane. Also, batteries come with different connectors. For 2S and 3S batteries with capacities around 500 milliamp hours, the red JST connector is most commonly used. A 4S, on the other hand, typically requires connectors such as the XT60 that are capable of handling higher power. Okay, so that was a lot of info, but I will summarize the main points here. A 2S is a good start for a slow or park flyer or a sailplane, while a 3S will provide a broad performance range and even allow for some limited 3D flying. A 4S might be necessary for extreme 3D. Do not just go by the number specified on batteries, especially the discharge rates, but do your own testing to see if the battery consistently delivers the power that you need, and not only when it is fresh, but after it has been somewhat depleted. Testing will allow you to know and optimize the performance of your system, and it may even help to uncover issues that could result in an unfortunate incident. So that is it for the batteries. But I am working on a video that tackles the design and testing of the entire power system, including motors, props, and ESCs. So do look out for that. Thank you, and I hope that you found this video useful.